This is a tutorial video introducing the idea of empirical formula and explaining how to calculate it. This is obviously a really calculation heavy topic so if you want to follow along you are going to need a calculator. And if you'd like some more practice then there is a link to a worksheet in the description. By the end of this video you should be able to define empirical formula, identify what the empirical formula of a compound is if you're given its molecular formula, calculate an empirical formula based on mass data, calculate it based on percentage data, and finally combine it with a relative formula mass to work out a molecular formula. An empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio of elements in a compound. If you're doing some analytical chemistry to identify an unknown substance, then many techniques will tell you the empirical formula. They tell you that your substance contains twice as much carbon as nitrogen, but not exactly how many atoms there are in each molecule, because you don't know how many molecules you have, so you can't work that out. Now, for an ionic compound, any formula that you see will be the empirical formula, so you could work it out from a picture just by counting the positive and negative ions and working out the ratio between those. If you think about it, in sodium chloride, the formula is NaCl, but that doesn't mean that there's one sodium ion and one chloride ion, there are thousands of them. But it doesn't really matter exactly how many ions there are, it just matters that they're in a one-to-one -one ratio. So that's your empirical formula. For molecular substances, it's a little bit more complicated. Sometimes the molecular formula and the empirical formula are the same. Water has a molecular formula of H2O. Well, you can't simplify 2 to 1 any more than that, so water's empirical formula is also H2O. But that won't always be the case, so let's have a look at an example where it's not. If we take the first three alkenes, ethene with a molecular formula of C2H4, propene C3H6, and butene C4H8, all of those molecular formulae can be simplified to a ratio of one carbon to two hydrogen. So they all have the same empirical formula, CH2. At the end of this video, we'll look at how we can work out which one of these compounds we're talking about. But for now, let's just double check that you've understood this concept of empirical formula. Here we have the molecular formulae of five compounds, and in each instance, we're looking for the empirical formula. So the simplest whole number ratio of the atoms of the elements in that compound. So for the first one, C4H10, or butane, I can simplify that 4 to 10 ratio down to be 2 to 5. So my empirical formula is C2H5. Pause the video and write down what you think the empirical formula of the other four compounds is. For question 2, a 2 to 4 ratio will simplify down to be 1 to 2. So the empirical formula is NO2. Question three is a little bit trickier because it's already as simple as it can get. So my empirical formula for carbon dioxide is still just CO2. For question four, heptene, that seven to 14 ratio will simplify to one to two. So again, we've got another example of a compound with the empirical formula CH2. And finally, acetic acid can be simplified to give an empirical formula of CH2O. Empirical formula used to get a bigger, more explicit part of the GCSE specification, but now it's really in there as a little bit of a footnote with ionic compounds. So it's entirely possible that for GCSE, you might be given a picture like this of an ionic lattice and asked to identify what the empirical formula is. So we do this by counting up the number of each ion. And here I've got a lattice that contains five magnesium ions and 10 chloride ions. So that five to 10 ratio can be simplified to be one to two, and the empirical formula is MgCl2. When calculating empirical formulae, there are two types of question, although in reality, there's a trick we can use to make them basically exactly the same. In the first type of question, we are given masses. So here we have a, a substance that contains 4.2 grams of nitrogen and 9.6 grams of oxygen. And in order to calculate this question, firstly, I'm going to need my periodic table. Nitrogen has a relative atomic mass of 14, which I can tell because this is the larger of the two numbers on the periodic table square. And remember, your periodic table does have a key on it which tells you which number the relative atomic mass is. Oxygen has a relative atomic mass of 16. Once I know these numbers, I can work out the number of moles of each substance. So here's our old friend, mass is Mr. Mole. I know that really here we're talking about relative atomic mass, not relative formula mass. So it should be AR, not MR. But functionally, these two numbers tell us the same thing. They tell us the mass of one mole. 
and I always had the equation in my head as mass is Mr. Mole, whereas mass is R mole just doesn't sound right. So hopefully you'll forgive me for a little bit of poetic license. If I rearrange that equation, I get mole is mass divided by MR or AR. So in each instance, I want to take the mass and divide it by the relative atomic mass, which is the larger of the two numbers. So for nitrogen, that means 4.2 divided by 14 grams per mole is 0.3 moles of nitrogen. If I do the same thing for oxygen, I get 0.6 moles. So right now I have a ratio of 0.3 to 0.6, but that's not a whole number ratio, so I can't use it for my empirical formula. To turn these into whole numbers, I'm going to divide by the smaller of the two numbers. Any number divided by itself will be 1, so 0.3 divided by 0.3 is 1. Then, just like in maths, whatever I do to the left-hand side, I need to do to the right-hand side. So I'm going to divide 0.6 by 0.3 as well. Watch out here that you don't end up dividing both sides by themselves and coming up with a one-to-one -one ratio. We're always dividing by the smaller of the two numbers. 0.6 divided by 0.3 is 2, so we've got a 1 to 2 ratio. Now remember, you need to be giving your answer in the format of a chemical formula, so we can't just leave 1 to 2. We need to add some letters in. 1 nitrogen to 2 oxygen is NO2, and that is my empirical formula. Sometimes you're going to get instances where the numbers don't work out as perfectly as in the previous example. And this is pretty unusual for GCSE and A-level because in most other examples of quantitative chemistry, the examiners kind of fudge the numbers to make sure that the answers you get on your exam paper are nice and straightforward. But for empirical formulae, they often don't. So let's have a look at a question that is a little bit more tricky. Here we have a substance that contains 4.4 grams of copper and 0.56 grams of oxygen. So again, I need my periodic table squares and my mass is Mr. Mole formula. And I'm going to do 4.4 grams divided by 63.5 grams per mole to get 0.0693 moles. Now, one thing I would say at this point is that I've had to round this because otherwise it wouldn't fit on the screen. But as far as you can when you're doing quantitative chemistry, don't round until the very last minute. Write down everything that your calculator display says, or if you have an answer button, then use that because as you round, you're going to introduce uncertainty. And there's a chance that you'll end up with an answer that, even though you've done the correct method, is not the answer on the mark scheme. So here I've got 0.0693 moles of copper, and then I do 0.56 divided by 16 to get 0.035 moles of oxygen. I put those in a ratio, just like I did before, and I've got 0.0693 to 0.035. I divide both sides by the smaller number. 0.035 divided by itself is of course 1 and then if I divide the other side I get 1.98. Now that is close enough that it's okay for you to just round to the nearest integer and this is going to be really really common with empirical formulae questions. I'd say as a general rule of thumb if you're within about 0.05 of an integer that is close enough that you're fine to round it. So here we're going to call this 2 copper to 1 oxygen and the empirical formula is Cu2O. Now, this is our second type of question. Sometimes we don't get masses, we get percentages. And you might look at this and go, well, I don't know how to do that. But the easiest way is just to imagine that in the question they've told you, you have 100 grams of the substance. Because if you have 100 grams, then suddenly 7.19% becomes 7.19 grams. And likewise, 92.81% becomes 92.81 grams. And now we can just do exactly the same process that we went through before. So the 7.19 grams divided by 31, which is the relative atomic mass of phosphorus, gives me 0.232 moles. And 92.81 grams divided by 80 gives me 1.160 moles of bromine. So if I put those in a ratio and then simplify it by dividing by 0.232, because I'm always dividing by the smaller of the two numbers, and whatever I do to one side of my ratio, I need to do to the other, I get a 1 to 5 ratio. And again, I need to write this as a chemical formula. So my final answer is going to be PBr5. Now let's have a look at one more way that we could make this trickier. Here we're given an oxide of iron that contains 70% iron. They haven't actually told me in the question how much oxygen is in the compound, but of course I'm expected to know that the total amount is 100%. So I can work out for myself that if the compound is 70% iron, then it's 30% oxygen. So 70 divided by 57 is 1.25 moles, and 30 divided by 16 is 1.875 moles. And if I put those in a ratio, 
and divide by the smallest number, I have another problem. Because now I've got a ratio of 1 to 1.5 and that's not close enough that I can round up to 2 or down to 1. So what I need to do here is think, well, how can I make 1.5 an integer? I know, I'll double it. So I'm going to double both sides and I get a ratio of 2 to 3. So that means my empirical formula is going to be Fe2O3. Now, we don't just need to know how to calculate empirical formula. We also need to know what we can do with it once we've got it. So let's look back at this very first example that we had with our nitrogen and our oxygen and the empirical formula of NO2. Now, if I want to go on and do certain chemistry, I might need to know exactly which compound I have. And there's a slight problem here because there's more than one compound that has the empirical formula NO2. So what if I want to know exactly what I've got? Well, by using certain kinds of mass spectrometry, I can find out what the actual relative formula mass is. And then I can use that together with my empirical formula to work out the molecular formula. In this instance, the relative formula mass is 92. So now I'm asked to deduce the molecular formula. So what I do is I take the empirical formula and I work out what the relative formula mass of that empirical formula would be. Say this compound were just NO2, how much would a mole of it weigh? So one lot of 14 for nitrogen, two lots of 16 for oxygen gives me a relative formula mass of 46. And then I need to see how many times does 46 fit into 92. 92 divided by 46 is two. This basically tells me that my empirical formula will fit twice into the relative formula mass that I've got. So I need to double everything in that empirical formula and that gives me N2O4 and that is my molecular formula. Hopefully that all made sense to you and you're now ready for some more practice calculations. If you do want to have a practice then there is a link to a worksheet in the description down below and if you found this useful then don't forget to like and subscribe for more chemistry videos coming soon.